A reading from the book of Judges. There was a certain man from Zorah of the clan of the Danites, whose name was Manoah. His wife was barren and had borne no children. An angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Though you are barren and have had no children, yet you will conceive and bear a son. Now then, be careful to take no wine or strong drink, and to eat nothing unclean. As for the son you will conceive and bear, no razor shall touch his head. For this boy is to be consecrated to God from the womb. It is he who will begin the deliverance of Israel from the power of the Philistines. The woman went and told her husband, A man of God came to me. He had the appearance of an angel of God, terrible indeed. I did not ask him where he came from, nor did he tell me his name. But he said to me, You will be with child and will bear a son. So take neither wine nor strong drink, and eat nothing unclean. For the boy shall be consecrated to God from the womb until the day of his death. The woman bore a son and named him Samson. The boy grew up and the Lord blessed him. The spirit of the Lord stirred him. My mouth shall be filled with your praise and I will sing your glory. Be my rock of refuge, a stronghold to give me safety, for you are my rock and my fortress. O my God, rescue me from the hand of the wicked. For you are my hope, O Lord, my trust, O God, for my youth. On you I depend from birth. From my mother's womb, you are my strength. My mouth shall be filled with your praise, and I will sing your glory. I will treat of the mighty works of the Lord. O God, I will tell of your singular justice. O God, you have taught me from my youth, and tell the presence I proclaim your wondrous deeds. My mouth shall be filled with your praise, and I Dominus Fabiscum, et cum spiritus tuo, Lexia Sancti Evangelii Secundum Lucam, Gloria Tibi et Homine. In the days of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah of the priestly division of Abijah. His wife was from the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Both were righteous in the eyes of God, observing all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blamelessly. But they had no child, because Elizabeth was barren, and both were advanced in years. Once, when he was serving as priest, and his divisions turned before God, according to the practice of the priestly service, he was chosen by lot to enter the sanctuary of the Lord to burn incense. Then when the whole assembly of the people was praying outside at the hour of the incense offering, the angel of the Lord appeared to him standing at the right of the altar of incense. Zechariah was troubled by what he saw 
and fear came upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, because your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall name him John. And you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He will drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. He will go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of fathers toward children and the disobedient to the understanding of the righteous, to prepare a people fit for the Lord. Then Zechariah said to the angel, How shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is advanced in years. And the angel said to him in reply, I am Gabriel, who stand before God. I was sent to speak to you and to announce to you this good news. But now you will be speechless and unable to talk until the day these things take place, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled at their proper time. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and were amazed that he stayed so long in the sanctuary. But when he came out, he was unable to speak to them, and they realized that he had seen a vision in the sanctuary. He was gesturing to them, but remained mute. Then when his days of ministry were completed, he went home. After this time, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and she went into seclu seclusion for five months, saying, So has the Lord done for me at a time when he has seen fit to take away my disgrace before others. Verbum Domini. Today we have the Annunciation to Zachariah of the birth of the coming uh, birth of John the Baptist, who his mission we celebrate during Advent as to turn the hearts of fathers to children to prepare a people fit for the Lord. And that is the message of Advent, right? We're in preparation for the coming of Jesus, uh, this radical new, newness of God in Revelation history. We have all this preparation, but then God does something extraordinarily new in sending his son for our salvation. That it's not just up to us. It's not just a product of our own strength and preparation that we are saved. Now it's absolutely key that we are prepared to receive him. We need to turn our hearts to him, which we can only do by God's grace even, but to receive this gift of salvation. So that, that's the message here that Isaiah is coming in the power, and, I mean that John the Baptist is coming in the spirit and power of Elijah uh, to convert us, right? To turn to God that we may receive his gift of new life, his gift of salvation. So today in Zechariah's Annunciation, we're told that he is of the priestly, he's a priestly family with his wife Elizabeth in the line of Aaron. And he's in this division of Abijah, they call it, and they divided up the priestly families and they all would have their turn, the men would have their turn to offer incense at the altar of incense. And it would only come up once in a lifetime. So this was a, every twice a day in the temple they would offer incense and it was his turn once in a lifetime. So it's a big, big moment. He's just outside the Holy of Holies. You have a, uh, this place where they would have the Yom Kippur celebration, the sacrifice of atonement. And he is outside the altar of incense where the lamp stands and the altar, the showbread is there. Uh, all this gold, very ornate. The second most holiest place in the temple. He is there offering incense. So everything is perfect, right? While carrying out his priestly duties, Gabriel appears to him and he doubts, right? <laughs> kind of an epic fail. And he doubts Gabriel's annunciation to him. 
Mary questions the manner of how this is going to happen, but apparently Zachariah's questioning is one from lack of faith. Zechariah, being a righteous man, would know the history. He would know how Abraham and Sarah, even though they were old and barren, were able to conceive Isaac, or the first reading today, Manoah and his wife would conceive Samson and Hannah, Samuel. There was plenty of history to this where barren women in the Old Testament would have a miraculous uh, fertility, you know, be given by God that they may conceive. And it's a beautiful sign how God makes daughter Zion, Israel, fruitful, that he gives new life. And in the first reading today from Manoah and his wife who conceived Samson, God also gives strength, right? Samson is in the line of the judges there and he's to clear out all these Philistines in the land of Israel during the time of judges by the strength of God. And we know the story I read ahead last night, I was reading it, such a great story where he, he gets his hair clipped, right? And he loses his strength. But even in his death, when the hair grows back, right, he kills more Philistines there. And it's an image of God conquering sin, driving out this pagan people from this promised land that he wanted to give his people, an image of heaven, an image of the kingdom that God is preparing for us and a call for purification that we all must have. So today, Zechariah is muted. Faith, people live by faith. We know at the resurrection, faith sends us running, right? Makes us energetic. Faith uh, gives us a new song of worship, to sing a new song to the Lord, right? That we have this new experience of God. So faith gives us energy to run the race, and faith gives us a new song in our hearts. And the opposite, when we lack faith, is we're muted. And when he does speak later on, he names John, and the message is, the meaning of the name is that God is merciful. That despite all this human failure and this inability to save ourselves, that God is merciful, he reaches out to us. Even in the fact that we're told that both are righteous, Elizabeth, and Zechariah are righteous in the eyes of God, observing all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blamelessly. But there's a failure even in our attempts to live the law, which really we can't, right, without God's grace. There's a failure there that the law cannot save us. God has to come in and fulfill that law to save us. I mean, put it in modern knowledge parlance would be that you know, you can tell me what I need to do, but I, I need God's strength. I need the strength of a Samson, right, given by God. I need new life, like this barren woman receiving new life from God to be saved. It's a simple message, but I think we all have a lot of trouble really grasping that, that we are called to live by faith, to depend on God for our salvation. We live in a, a world that has the dazzling technology and it seems like we have this, you know, this, this promise ever put before us of a self-salvation or how technology can fix all our problems and we just continuously fail because we're not turning to God, right? Morally and human suffering just increases because we're not depending on God in faith. So, we see this in the life of Israel. It fails corporately. Two exiles, Greek rule in the second century. At the time of Christ, they were ruled by the Romans. The temple is destroyed a couple of times. And the line of kings is cut off. They lose the ark, right? It's no longer in the temple even. Man fails. But the message is God succeeds. He saves us in the new coming and the new covenant in the coming of Christ. So we fail and then Jesus God sends his son Jesus, the word became flesh, prophesied in the Old Testament, suddenly there will come to the temple the Lord whom you seek. He'll come to the temple to fulfill the law to fulfill all this priestly line that Zechariah and Elizabeth represent that Jesus by the gift of his Holy Spirit is making his people a priestly people to offer 
worship, you know, in his body, which is a fulfillment of the temple, right? The temple passes away, it's fulfilled in Christ that we can offer sacrifice in him, that we can receive the gifts of salvation in and through him. So we are drawn into communion into his body. That's all fulfilled in Jesus Christ. So there's this beautiful preparation, but there's also this radical newness in Christ. There's a beautiful preparation that we have to turn our hearts to receive him, but it's Jesus that comes and saves us and fulfills us and does this great work in us. And we're going to hear this in Mary's Annunciation. If we think about her Annunciation scene, her lineage is not mentioned. Gabriel enters her house, which is certainly a simple home in the town of Nazareth, not even mentioned uh, in the Old Testament. There's no religious liturgy going on, and it's a virginal conception that she has to believe in, not just a barren woman being made fruitful. So what stands out there is her faith. What stands out is how grace is operating in her life, that she is the immaculate conception. She is conceived without original sin. And by logical consequence, she doesn't commit a sin her whole life. She's free of concupiscence. She's radically transformed. We see God's victory in her clearly. We see his great work, uh, what's possible by his grace in her. And she is a pattern of holiness for us today. So in Zechariah, we see the continuity and the history of salvation. In Mary, we see this newness of God's hidden work. That's the great mystery there, that God does so in such a hidden and humble way. Right? That's the message of the New Testament, that we become humble, and with faith, God can work and win this victory in us. It's a beautiful message. It's a freeing message, where the world tells us, get out there, work hard, do it yourself, succeed, dominate, control, have power. The way of Jesus is one of humility, faith, and receiving this new life, receiving this gift of salvation. May we receive Jesus in his Christmas mystery and receive this new life that he promises us.